We are going to talk about graphing rational functions and we're going to talk about the way they shift. If I have the function f at x is equal to 1 over x, if x is 1, then y, which is f of x, it'd be 1 over 1, which of course is just 1. That is the point, 1, 1. If x is 10, well, f at x, or the y, that'd be 1 over 10, which is 1 tenth. If I go way down here to 10, I'll go up just a little bit to a 1 tenth. If x was 2, y is 1 over 2, or 1 half. So when x is 2, that would be the point 2, 1 half. If x is 100, y is going to be 1 over 100, which is 1 hundredth. So if I go way down here to 100, I go just a little bit above to 1 hundredth. And we could just keep on doing this. If x is 1,000, if I plug in 1,000 here, y is 1 thousandth. You see, I get really, 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 really close to zero, but I will never touch zero. My y will never get to zero. If I plug in 1 half for x, y is 2. And sure enough, look here. If x is 1 half, go just a little bit, y goes up to 2. And similar things happen when I pick negatives for the x. If x is negative 10, and I plug in negative 10 there, y is negative 1 tenth. So if I go negative 10, I go down just a little bit to negative 1 tenth. If I plug in negative 100 for x, y is going to be 1 over negative 100. How do I plot that? I go way down here to 100, way on down here. As my x's are approaching positive infinity, as they're getting bigger, 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 my y's, which is my f of x, my graph, it's approaching zero. It's not going up, it's not going down, it's just leveling off at zero. As my x's are approaching negative infinity. That means go, going to the left, the left. When that's happening, my f of x, or my graph, or my y's, whatever you want to say, what is it approaching? Is it going up? Is it going down? No, it's just sort of leveling off right here at zero. But that is for another video. Let's continue talking about this graph. f at x is equal to 1 over x. Okay, I also want to talk about asymptotes. Okay, asymptotes means never meeting, never quite getting there. But do y'all see how this graph curls up around here? This is a horizontal line, and that is when y is equal to zero. This is a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Do you see how my graph, it never touches that horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. I also have a vertical asymptote. Do you notice how my graph curls up and it never will touch zero? This is a vertical asymptote, x equals zero. And in this graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x, we have a horizontal asymptote. Now it's not zero, it's y equals zero. And I also have a vertical asymptote, x is equal to zero. Why do you think my graph will never have an x that's equal to zero? I have x in the denominator. And if I have zero in the denominator, it is undefined. Okay, I can also talk about the domain of this graph. When I get to zero, my graph doesn't happen at zero. It curls up, it gets really, really close, but not at zero. Then my graph starts again. So my domain is negative infinity, up to zero, take a break, then right past the zero, I use the parentheses to mean it's not zero, but right after zero, and it goes and it goes to infinity. Very similar with the range. The y's start down here, but what happens at zero? When y is equal to zero, I don't have any points there. So the range is actually the same as the domain. Negative infinity to zero, take a break, and then zero to infinity. Okay, let's look at this graph. I have the graph f of x equals one over x plus two. Well, this starts 
with my basic function 1 over x that's this graph but this is shifted now I do have a video on transformations of functions and so you may remember if you've seen that video this is shifted not to the right two it is shifted to the left two this is a horizontal shift right or left but you have to be very careful because it's opposite of what you may think so this graph is shifted to the left two spaces so now I have a vertical asymptote x is equal to negative 2 now it's not negative 2 it's x is equal to negative 2 an asymptote is a line make sure you put x is equal to negative 2 but let's look at something even more interesting remember when I'm looking for the domain the denominator cannot equal 0 so x plus 2 cannot equal to 0 which means x cannot equal negative 2 and sure enough if I am looking for my domain I will have to say my domain is equal to it would be negative infinity it'll take a little break at negative 2 I don't have any x's there are negative 2 and then it starts back at negative 2 and it will go to positive infinity my range my horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0 I did not shift it up or down this was just a shift to the left two places so if I wanted my range it would still be negative infinity up to 0 stop take a break and then 0 to infinity okay I have another function f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 4 I know that it began as the graph 1 over x but I see this and I realize that this is a horizontal shift right or left but be careful it's opposite of what you may think and this shifts to the right four places that is my new graph see if you can find the vertical asymptote without looking at your graph well I do realize that this denominator cannot equal 0 correct which means X cannot equal 4 my domain would be negative infinity 4 but then my graph starts back right after 4 and goes to infinity and sure enough x cannot equal 4 because what happens if I plug 4 here I would get 0 in the denominator if I want to know about the vertical asymptote I'm wanting to know about this line where my graph never meets and that is this line x is equal to 4 so I do have a vertical asymptote x equals 4 that is the line that my graph never touches okay now let's talk about vertical shifts once again this is the graph f of x is equal to 1 over x if I wanted you to sketch the graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 5 this is a vertical shift all this graph is going to do is to, it's going to go up 5 spaces and that is my new graph that's f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 5 now notice my vertical asymptote is still at x is equal to 0 but what about my horizontal asymptote it has changed the horizontal asymptote is actually this line y is equal to 5 the domain is negative infinity all the way up to zero stop take a break at zero because remember I do have a vertical asymptote look at the function x cannot equal zero so be negative infinity up to zero take a break because it starts back right after zero and it goes to infinity but now the range is a little different on this one so the range is negative infinity it goes up to five my graph never touches five so I can't include that it starts right after 5 and it goes to positive infinity now let's try one more vertical shift problem if I have the problem f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 3 you should be able to tell me that that is the graph of 1 over x shifted down three spaces so if I have this graph 1 over x I will shift it down three spaces my domain is still negative infinity up to 0 stop then 0 to infinity but my range my range changed 
Where is my horizontal asymptote here? This is the line y is equal to negative 3. So what is my range? It will be negative infinity and up to negative 3. Stop. Do not include negative 3. None of my graph is on negative 3 for the range. But then I start back right after negative 3 and my graph goes to infinity. Okay, now we're going to talk about when we take this function, 1 over x, and we reflect it over the x-axis. If I put a negative in front of the function, that will reflect it over the x-axis. It flips it across the x-axis. So now that is a graph, f of x is equal to negative 1 over x. I still have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. Sure enough, x still cannot equal 0 because that would make the denominator equal to 0. I still have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So my asymptotes did not change when I didn't do any shifting right or left or up or down. I just reflected this over the x-axis. Okay, let's see what this function does. I want you to graph f of x equals negative 1 over x minus 1 plus 4. So I should notice that this is going to have a horizontal shift and it is going to go right one space. I should also know that because it has a negative out in front that is going to be reflected over the x-axis. But I also know because of this plus 4 that it is going to go up 4 units. And that is the graph of f of x is equal to negative 1 over x minus 1 plus 4. For the vertical asymptote, you know I cannot let the denominator equal 0. So x cannot equal 1. Okay, well sure enough, when x is equal to 1, yes, my graph is turning away from it. I do have a vertical asymptote, x equals 1. Now in this graph, to find a horizontal asymptote, I can just look and determine the horizontal asymptote by the shifts. So the horizontal asymptote would be y is equal to 4. Now if I want to talk about the domain and the range, we should be able to see that the domain is, it looks like it's negative infinity and it goes up until 1. Then my graph resumes right after 1 and goes to positive infinity. My range Remember this graph, is, it reaches all the way down, it goes on and on and on. And if my range is negative infinity, it goes up to 4. I take a break at 4, that's where I have a horizontal asymptote. Then it starts back right after 4 and it goes to positive infinity. Let's try one more. Okay, f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2 minus 5. This is going to go left 2 and down 5. If I start with my basic 1 over x, it's going to go left 2, and then it's going to go down 5 spaces, and that's my new graph, left 2, down 5. I do have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative 2, but look at the algebra. I knew x could not be negative 2 because that would make my denominator equal to 0, so I should have an asymptote there. And I will also, since my graph was shifted down five spaces, so now I have a horizontal asymptote, y equals negative five. 